If you're one of the lucky gamers who has secured a PlayStation 5 console, your next step is to figure out which games to pair with it. The new Ratchet & Clank game has piqued your interest, but you want a little more info on which version of the game to buy. If that sounds like you, let's discuss the differences between the versions, as well as if those differences will impact your gameplay experience. What's good, everybody? At the time of this recording, there are three editions of the game available. The first is the Standard Edition. This features the base game without any additional bells or whistles. This version is available both as a physical copy and digitally. Current retail price on this edition is 70 US dollars. The second is the Launch Edition. The Launch Edition was intended for pre-ordered copies of the game in the United States and Canada, meaning the only way to get your hands on a Launch Edition now would be to buy a physical copy. The quantity of those is limited to however many were printed before the game released. The Launch Edition includes everything in the standard version, plus early access to the Pixelizer weapon and early access to the Carbonox armor. Having access to these items early does not change the experience a great deal. The Pixelizer is similar to another weapon the player can purchase in the game, that being the Enforcer. Both weapons are most effective against groups of small enemies at short range. Here's some footage of the Pixelizer in action, and comparing that with the Enforcer, you can see how the two stack up to each other. I personally prefer the Pixelizer, because it only takes one shot to knock enemies back instead of two, but both weapons perform essentially the same. The Enforcer can be the first weapon a player purchases if they so choose, regardless of which edition of the game they buy. In order to unlock the Pixelizer without getting it through an early access bonus, the player must complete the entire game one time, begin a challenge mode playthrough, and then purchase the weapon from the weapons vendor for the rock bottom price of one bolt. As this is the lowest possible transaction price in the game, the biggest hurdle here is the time invested in beating the game once, which I think most people can do in less than 15 hours. The Carbonox armor can also be obtained on a normal playthrough without getting it as a launch edition bonus. To do this, the player must complete the bronze, silver, and gold level challenges in Zerky's Battle Arena. Time is once again the main hurdle for unlocking the Carbonox armor. The player must complete the planet Visceron in the story, which is fairly late in the game, before they can even attempt the Gold Cup challenges. It's also worth noting the Carbonox armor received as an early access bonus is cosmetic only. Regardless of which edition they buy, players must complete the gold level challenges in the arena to unlock the set bonus for the armor. It's a pretty good set bonus too, allowing players to earn 20% more bolts. I should probably go beat the gold level challenges as soon as this video ends. To summarize the info thus far, if you planned to buy a physical copy anyway, and can get your hands on a launch edition, you may as well go for it instead of the standard edition, since they both retail for the same price. Finally, there's the Digital Deluxe Edition. As the name implies, this version is only available digitally. Retail price for the Deluxe Edition is 80 US dollars. Before I go any further, yes, you can upgrade to the Deluxe Edition through the PlayStation Store for 10 US dollars after buying the standard or launch editions. While you would have had to order the Deluxe Edition prior to the game's release in order to get the Launch Edition bonuses, you still get quite a bit of content for the extra 10 bucks. Specifically, the Deluxe Edition includes everything in the Standard Edition, plus 5 armor sets, a sticker pack for Photo Mode, 20 Rare Tanium, a digital soundtrack, and a digital art book. Let's break down each of these. The armor sets include the Android Armor, the Rebel Armor, the Imperial Armor, the Hacker Armor, and the Scavenger Armor. None of these armor sets come with any set bonus. They change how the player character looks, and that's all. However, it is worth mentioning that armor set bonuses in this game are active even if the player isn't wearing the armor that provides the set bonus. Let's say for example you like how the Imperial Armor looks, but still want the 20% bonus bolts earned from the Carbonox Armor. The good news is, the set bonus for the Carbonox armor is active as long as you've unlocked it. This means you can wear whatever you want and still earn 20% more bolts. So don't think of these armor sets as worthless just because there's no set bonus. If you like how they look, consider upgrading to the Deluxe Edition. Rift Apart's photo mode is already fairly fleshed out as photo modes go. You can apply filters, change the pose of the character, and a wide variety of other settings. 
The Deluxe Edition adds some extra stickers to the first sticker pack seen here. In every edition of the game, extra stickers can be unlocked through gameplay, which explains why this new save file has so many blank spaces. I've never been the type of player to use Photomone myself, but I wanted to provide a breakdown since other people seem to enjoy it. The 20 Raritanium is nice to have, but doesn't change the game in any major way. Raritanium is what you'll use to make your weapons stronger after you obtain them. Rough estimate here? I'd say 20 pieces is enough to upgrade one weapon to 5-10% to of its maximum capacity. You'll go through hundreds of pieces of Raritanium on your playthrough, so this probably won't be the main reason people buy the Deluxe Edition. To access the digital soundtrack and art book, select the game from the PS5's home screen, then hit these three dots, then select this option that says Digital Deluxe Edition Bonus Content. From there, click Play Game. You're presented with both the soundtrack and the art book. The soundtrack contains 20 songs spanning the entirety of the game's story mode. You can do all the things you would expect to be able to do with a normal music player. You can fast forward, rewind, pause, skip, randomize, and add a track to favorites to create your own playlist. You can hide the track list and the user interface to only have these background pictures appearing on screen while the music plays. The art book contains a fair number of concept sketches from when the game is in development. You'll see behind-the-scenes looks at what the heroes, villains, secondary characters, planets, and weapons all looked like before the finalized versions we see in-game. It took me around 10 minutes to flip through all the artwork, and that was without spending a ton of time on any one image. You can use your cursor to zoom in on select images, and the art book is split into chapters to allow you to quickly go through it instead of going page by page. There is an auto-scroll feature, and, like the soundtrack, you can hide the user interface if you so choose. To summarize, the bonuses from the Deluxe Edition are nice to have and will mostly appeal to fans with more than a casual interest in the series. They don't change the core gameplay experience in any meaningful way. Hopefully you found something in this video helpful and now have all the info you need to decide which version is right for you. Thank you for watching and until next time, make it count.